It's not exactly news that those at the top of the Labour Party dislike capitalism. But what's less often pointed out is how little they actually understand about it. Last week, on my Twitter account, I published something of a demolition of Labour's claim to save every household £6,700 a year. After only a cursory look at the figures, I was able to show that every single aspect of the party's calculations was either partially or wholly inaccurate, ranging from the conjuring up of an average household in which two people bought £3,000 rail season tickets, despite how it feels in London, only 11% of us actually commute by train, to citing a paper on the benefits to consumers of renationalization which did not actually address the topic. I was complaining to a friend about the sheer gall involved in producing such a document. I'd have used chutzpah, but that doesn't really feel appropriate with the modern Labour Party. He asked me what would be worse, John McDonnell's team having done it deliberately, or them just being that bad with numbers? And that gave me pause. Because it reminded me of something that happened last year. McDonnell claimed on the Today programme that for the first time, shareholders now take a greater share of national income than workers. I pointed out that this was, by any conceivable economic metric, utter nonsense. When pushed, McDonald's team provided the following justification. According to the latest statistics, the amount of national income going towards wages, the labor share of GDP, had dipped below half. This meant that the rest must be going to those evil shareholders. The McDonald model of the corporate economy, in other words, consisted purely of wages and profits slash dividends. But what was more interesting was that they genuinely didn't seem to realize why this didn't make sense. Perhaps because so few of them have actually worked in a business, or scrutinized one through the prism of a balance sheet rather than the analytical framework suggested by Das Kapital. There are many reasons to be skeptical about the Corby Knight's credentials for running a major economy. But it's not just the details of their proposals, the colossal spending and borrowing, the seizing of assets at below market price, the way in which they would almost certainly make us all poorer, that are cause for concern. Fundamentally, it's because their policy platform derives from a worldview in which capitalism and markets are things done to people rather than by them, and ultimately for them. In Jeremy Corbyn's gushing forward to a reprinted edition of Imperialism by J. A. Hobson, a book which, incidentally, contains shocking anti Semitic stereotyping about Jewish financiers, the now Labour leader claims that free market capitalism cannot provide for everyone, or sustain the natural world. It's very imperative as if ever has for more on this story, visit the news article link.